Welcome to From the VC's Bookshelf, a podcast from TBR, the College System of Tennessee, the state's largest higher education system. In this series, we examine how we might re-envision the work we do and how we work together as we move into a post-pandemic world. Please join our host, Dr. Heidi Lemming, Vice Chancellor for Student Success, as she leads a live discussion with industry experts and leaders throughout our system. In our spring 2024 podcast series, we are leaning into themes found in the real world of college, what higher education is and what it can be by Wendy Fishman and Howard Gardner. This series will focus on presidential perspectives on leading today's community and technical colleges and the issues and concerns facing TBR college students. In today's podcast, I'm excited to be talking to Mike Whitehead. Mike Whitehead is president of TCAP Pulaski. He's been with TCAP for, eh, what, about nine years? Nine years. Yeah. And prior to becoming president, Mr. Whitehead served as the college's vice president, where he coordinated Skills USA and the National Technical Honor Society programs. He's earned a Bachelor of Science and Mathematics from Tennessee Tech University and a Master of Education from Tennessee State University. Prior to his arrival at TCAP Pulaski, Mr. Whitehead was a high school math educator in the Marshall County School System from 2006 to 2015 and previously worked for 13 years in manufacturing industries. TCAP Pulaski serves about 1,400 students Mm -hmm. um, and offers how many? 17? About 17 programs now. Technical career programs, yeah. So you can tell Mike brings a variety of experience and knowledge to this conversation today, and we're really excited to chat more. So let's do a brief recap of the themes found in the book, The Real World of College, for our listeners, in case you haven't been tuning in to our podcast series already. So we're going to dive into themes that play out similarly or maybe differently for our TBR colleges and students. So the authors of this book conducted interviews with more than 2,000 students, alumni, faculty, parents, trustees, and others. And those were conducted at 10 institutions ranging from highly selective liberal arts colleges to less selective state schools. So it's an important note to make here at the beginning that they did not look at post-secondary technical colleges or community colleges. That's the reason why we're doing this podcast, see what the differences or, again, similarities might be. So both of the authors argue that higher education in the United States has lost sight of its principal reason for existing and that they have coined the term higher higher education capital, which we're going to talk a little bit about today and get some perspectives on that. Uh, They define that as students uh, are thinking well and broadly, express themselves clearly, explore new ideas, open to possible transformations. And so I'm excited to to talk a little bit about how that plays out at our technical colleges today. Uh, The authors make arguments through their research that students are mainly concerned um, with not what we hear in the media. There's other things that they're mostly concerned with. So that'll also be interesting to talk about, uh, especially uh, students thinking about just making good grades, developing a resume, uh, and concerns over mental health issues uh, and this idea of feeling connected to others' community. So we're going to dive into reflecting on some of those perspectives. Um, Again, Authors make clear that they're focused on uh, their research on non-vocational higher education. So I think to start with, I think what's really important for our listeners to hear is, can you talk a little bit, Mike, about, you know, your institutional mission, how that's different than other types of schools uh, that people might be familiar with and, and how you prepare students for life beyond college? Well, First, Heidi, thank you for the opportunity to, to do this. Uh, it's exciting. Um, I'm enjoying, uh, I enjoyed preparing for the podcast. So yeah. um, our mission, simply put, is, is two phrases, um, student success and workforce development. And it not only, obviously, we want students to be successful when they leave here, but that's not just giving them a skill or training them in a skill. Um, We meet with every student. uh, We have orientation with them, but we also have a separate meeting uh, called TCAT Connect. And and one of the things we emphasize to our students is we want you to be connected. We want you to have 
a well-rounded experience while you're here at TCAP Pulaski. Um, at the end of your time here, whether it's 12 months, 16 months, or 20 months, the length of our longest program, we want you to leave and, and, and walk out and go, that was an amazing experience. Uh, not only did I learn how to weld, or not only did I learn nursing skills, but I became a stronger leader. Um, I created a network of lifelong contacts that are going to serve me well. Uh, fellow students, instructors, the staff here. Um, so uh, the second piece of our mission is workforce development. And so obviously um, our, our students are our customers, but also our communities, our region, um, our industries, our businesses, and, and they're strong partners. And they are depending on us to put out um, reliable, hardworking, um, strong work ethic um, students that will turn into productive employees for them. Right. And so we, we work um, both sides and uh, we, um, we have many opportunities uh, for students to, to be involved. Um, and we highlight those during our TCAT Connect. Um, we, we don't want them, they come here, it, it's a different setting or environment. It's, it's six hours of instruction a day. Mm -hmm. for five days a week for most of our full-time students. And so uh, we don't want just 30 hours of coming to either sit for lecture or hands-on experience. We give them opportunities to uh, participate in student activi activities throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, Skills USA, we have a very active Skills USA and Student Government Association. Um, we some of our students get to participate in Ollie the Otter seatbelt training program, and they go out into the community and um, dress up as Ollie mm -hmm. and and present seatbelt safety to kindergarten through second graders. And so uh, we we have many opportunities that we try to make our students well-rounded yeah. uh, as they leave us. So one of the things I love about TCAP Pulaski is you all have been very successful in your Skills USA chapter that you have here. And, you know, not many folks probably know what that is. So I would like for you to maybe do a little deeper dive sure. in talking about what is Skills USA and, and what has made your chapter particularly, uh, you know, successful you know you're getting some national recognition for your work on that we are extremely proud of our skills usa chapter it is a student organization uh it is it, the structure we combine it with our student government association so we at the beginning of the school the academic school year uh, in september uh, when most of our student our large largest number of students come on board um, we hold interest meetings. Uh, we promote uh, what Skills USA is. It's it's an opportunity to participate in and create opportunities for other students in a as a leadership position. Uh, we uh, select officers. We um, put them through training, uh, mm -hmm. leadership training. Uh, mm -hmm. They go to Tennessee Leadership uh, Training Institute and and other opportunities. And so, it, it's great to watch those students develop as leaders. Um, it's also great uh, to see them compete. Uh, the other piece of Skills USA is our students are uh, in the spring of the year at the state competition. They compete uh, in a state level competition from uh, against chapters across the uh, state of Tennessee. And uh, we've always had a large presence. We typically take about 40 students, uh, compete in about um, 12 to 15 contests. And many of those we walk away with first place mm -hmm. gold uh, and so then they get to go to nationals um, another piece of the skills usa story here is um, about 2017 i believe we started participating in the models of excellence competition and so our our officers our advisor um we we submitted our application and didn't know where it would go. And, and we, the first step is being recognized as a gold chapter by your state. Mm -hmm. And then we went on, uh, and I'm proud to say, uh, out of the last seven years, five of those seven years, we've been selected uh, as a national model of excellence. Only 24 schools from across the nation are selected uh, out of it's, I think it's roughly between two and 3,000 chapters that participate right. in that contest. And so we're extremely proud. We have not walked away 
mm-hmm. with the coveted uh, title as as one of the eight in our category yet. Um, but uh, we're we're just proud to make it uh, to uh, the national competition and and represent Tennessee. Um, it's amazing to see how excited the students uh, get um, being involved in that uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and just watching them them uh, flourish and, and develop as leaders along the way. So. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to see how well you do at this year's state competition is coming up later this spring in Chattanooga. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for our listeners, all of our TBR institutions are members of Skills USA can compete in the state competition. I think what uh, really highlights TCAT Pulaski in this work, though, is uh, the number of students you're bringing. Because you're not like the largest institution, you know, in our system by any means, but you're taking a really good number, which takes faculty engagement uh, to do that work. And so I think that's just really, again, an example we can hold up even to our other institutions about how to get involved and how you make it happen. Yeah, we typically... um 30 to 40 students and then probably about 10 to 15 uh, staff members Mm -hmm. uh, between faculty and staff members uh, go to the state competition. So um, it's expensive, Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a commitment that that we have made uh, to our students. And um, it's it's many times uh, the the surprising thing that I saw one time, um, many of our students have never left the county. Right. And so to, to see them, you know, and Chattanooga is, I mean, it's a big town, but it's not mm-hmm. that huge compared mm-hmm. to, to cities around the United States. But you would have thought they were in New York City. Right. Uh, just to, to see and experience. And then a, certainly when they went to Louisville or Atlanta, mm-hmm. um, they were just blown away. Right. Uh, and so it, it felt really good to, to be able to give them that experience. Yeah. And it connects perfectly when we think about, again, vocational education, mm-hmm. preparing students beyond life at college is not just about the skills. Certainly they're they're competing on a skill at these competitions, but you just described perfectly like they're also getting these experiences mm-hmm. that are opening their worldview. Yeah. And, and it's exciting um, at state and at national. I witnessed um uh, employers offering our students jobs mm-hmm. um, uh, on the spot uh, just because they were there. They were the they were the top uh, representing their trade. Um, so it's and, it's fun and potentially employers even again outside this county, right? So it's uh, again giving an opportunity to think about mm-hmm. to a expand, bigger picture, right? Mm-hmm. Expand their horizons beyond these 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 county borders. Yeah, I love it. Well, thank you for your work that you're doing to promote that here. Um, one of the things that the authors talk about that I want to kind of move into in discussing with you is that there's this framework of, of phases that um, students kind of move through mm-hmm. potentially as they come to our institutions. And I'm just curious if you think it's applicable to your institution. So through their research, they developed this framework that includes four ways of thinking about the student experience at college, inertial transactional, exploratory, and transformational. And so I just want to hear kind of your reactions to that that framework and, you know, does it apply here at a technical college with your students and, and maybe the challenges of working through that with students? It, it, before researching the book and, mm-hmm. and doing um, some um, background um, on it as well, I was unfamiliar with this framework. And, mm-hmm. and it was interesting because uh, at first glance, I thought maybe – all four categories did not apply to our students, but they mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. Um, the inertial and transactional where, you know, students are here for one goal. You know, they, they come here, they, they don't, um, they're here to get their skill. They're here mm-hmm. to get their credential. They're ready. Then they exit. Mm-hmm. They don't have time for, uh, that's, that's all they can give. And that's all they want to give. They, they, don't involve themselves in extracurriculars. They don't do Skills USA. They don't uh, participate in all of the student activities that we have going on. And it's it's simply, I think, based on life circumstances and, and their personal, um, what's going on in their personal lives. Many of our students uh, come to us, especially the older students. I mean, mm-hmm. our, our average age has dropped. Uh, I don't know the exact age now, but it's in the upper 20s. Um, that changed tremendously when Tennessee Promise came in 
onto the scene in 2014 um, because we started getting an influx of younger students. But right. prior to that, uh, that average age was probably mid to upper 30s. And mm -hmm. so those older students um, are working. Mm -hmm. They are uh, sometimes working more than one job. They are working uh, in a job trying to upskill um, their, their skills and talents. And um, they have families. Uh, they have children. Uh, they have children that play ball. They have children that have uh, other activities after school. And so they simply don't have any more in their tank to give. Um, they, they simply, and, and for them, it, it can be a challenge just to physically make it here to campus. Uh, many of them, many of our students work a third shift job. Uh, they're up all night working. They come here to school by 8 a.m., and some some will do a part time schedule, but even then, that's a challenge. And so, they I see them as being inertial and transactional, and and that's okay. Um, they they have a goal, and and they are working toward that goal. Um, we we offer them those opportunities to to uh, become involved, but we understand uh, their life circumstances, and and we want their focus to be on attaining their their goals. Um, we do have students. Uh, as I read about and, and researched uh, the exploratory or the uh, transformational um, frame of thinking, uh, we have those students. They tend to be the younger students. Uh, they're familiar with that um, type of thinking from their, their high school backgrounds. Uh, they're full of energy. They may not have a full-time job. They may not have a family yet. And so they come in and there, our current group of Skills USA officers is a prime example. Um, COVID uh, had a tremendous impact on our Skills USA participation, right. uh, and so we, we're building back. And for this is the first year we had of a full slate of officers, and these six students have been phenomenal. They they have a cohesiveness. They work together. They they build off each other's energy. Um, they uh, they are very transformational and exploratory in nature. They uh, they are constantly think of, of new ideas and and ways to involve the the students here. And so um, we serve all four types. Um, it's. It's interesting to, to watch that uh, exploratory and, and transformational student. You know, many of them are going to, obviously they're gonna be involved in everything. They're, we've had some of those students that have, uh, we've had one that has served, uh, we've had two serve as state Skills USA officers. Mm -hmm. We have had a student who I would consider he's, he was uh, exploratory and transformational. He served as student regent. And so um, they, they're interested. They they want to do all that extra. Um, mm -hmm. Many times they're gonna they're the students that will come back for a second program. They will come back um, as advisory committee members and serve with us. They they come back as guest speakers. Um, some of those as I as I look back in history and I look back at our current staff and faculty, we have out of our 45, um, 45 plus uh, staff and faculty. 15 of them are alumni. And those are students that were exploratory and transformational while they were here. Right. They've come back as instructors or they've come back as staff members. Uh, so it's it, it's interesting um, to to learn more about that framework. And But you know, at the end of the day, it, it's good to see all four of them meeting their goals, right. and, which is student success. And, and that puts a smile on your face. Yeah. Well, and certainly research uh, <coughs> coming out of the, the pandemic has, has indicated that high school students who are mostly virtual are certainly seeking these opportunities to build community at their mm -hmm. campuses, right? And so, the, you know, just so our listeners understand, I mean, for us, even though we might not be residential, like a college or a university might be, uh, there's still ways f that we're building community with those students and for them to be engaged if they're seeking that um, interest. So mm -hmm. that's great. One of the other things that um, is really important when we have these kind of experiences for students, whether it's Skills USA or or other uh, pieces built into our programs is that hands-on learning that you mentioned. Um, in the real world of college, uh, they 
present an idea of HEDCAP. It's an acronym for Higher Education Capital. And they talk about when students attend post-secondary institutions, they're building this capital, meaning they can analyze, reflect, connect, communicate on issues of importance and interest. And so the authors argue that there's degrees of HEDCAP a student can earn, depending on the steps like, again, whether they complete a degree, whether they don't, whether they're maybe engaged in some of these other activities mm-hmm. at the college, um, your academic programs, your institutional culture mission might contribute to HeadCap as well. So, you know, again, this is a, a new term kind of coined here, and I'd like to hear your reflections on that f- and from a TCAP president perspective. Yeah, it was very interesting. I had not heard of that term uh, before um, reading about this book, and so um, it... It does exist. Um, I didn't know what it was called, but mm-hmm. it does exist, and it does exist on a TCAT campus. Um, you know, we just talked about those four types, those four f- uh, concepts behind that framework: um, the inertial, the trans- uh, transactional, and um, transi- transformational and exploratory. Mm-hmm. You see, you know, with the inertial and transactional, those students are they, they have they've built some. Head cap, but mm-hmm. it's it's a smaller amount of head cap mm-hmm. because they uh, head cap is, is it's a combination of knowledge, it's not a combination of skills, credentials, personal attributes that that students acquire through their higher education experience, and so that capital can be tangible. Mm-hmm. Uh, that capital is um, credentials, it's skills, obviously for us, but it also that capital includes some intangible things like critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, uh, teamwork skills. Uh, our students work, um, our instructors have tremendous relationships with employers. And so mm-hmm. they understand that they're not looking just for a, a student that walks away with entry level skills. They're looking for a student who has tremendous work ethic. Um, we, we, TBR a few years ago instituted the worker characteristics course. And so there are 10 components of that course. And our instructors work with our students on those 10 components every term. There's a worker characteristics course every term. And so um, they're they're building those those teamwork skills, those um, um, problem-solving abilities. Uh, and, and in addition, another intangible um head cap is uh, the network of contacts uh, that those students are creating uh, while they're here. And um, absolutely, I think students can control the growth of their head cap. Um, Mm -hmm. Those students that are actively engaged in their coursework, that participate in discussions, that seek help when uh, it's needed, that strive for excellence. I, I see those students building a lot of capital while we're here. Those students that um, pursued a, a Skills USA officer position, the ones that pers- at the local level here on campus, but also right. those that pursued the state officer, the, the student that uh, pursued the regent position. Um, those students have built some some great capital while they're here. And those are the students that you know that come that say they don't want to leave mm-hmm. because they they have enjoyed it. They they've grown. Uh, I see that in exit interviews, uh, and it 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 puts a smile on your face to 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 know that you've that we've been a part of that experience and, and helping them to to build that capital and and help them to to be a contributing productive citizen in in whatever community they end up in. Right. Well, and again, the 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 research didn't focus on vocational education cuz they know that in vocational education we provide that hands-on mm-hmm. learning that experience and so they're kind of challenging the traditional university college models to think about how they might do that as well because it does contribute to that head cap. So you know, talk a little bit about what you, your students in a technical college, the classroom instruction, that hands-on piece. How is that different? Because we're talking about a different type of education. Yeah, they have many opportunities. Of course, you know, I think some of our students come to us with the a little bit of a misunderstanding that when they walk in day one, they're going out into the lab or the shop and they're going to be welding or they're going to be wiring something. Well, you know, very quickly they learn. Yeah, there's some theory. There's some electrical theory. We have to we have to make sure you are aware of that. So mm-hmm. we don't want 
um, to electrocute someone. We <laughs> right, don't want safety. to <laughs> cut a finger off. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but when the, uh, they obviously within the, each of you know even our farm tech students, we have a a lab that looks like a pharmacy. They're counting pills, they're compounding uh, uh, lotions and, and different things. And so they, they do get that hands-on experience, but also uh, we have the, uh, the privilege of um, participating in live work projects. And so our students can bring in work to be welded, uh, mm-hmm. to be wired. Uh, we also can do live work projects for our community where we go out and for nonprofits, we, we can, um, construct um, our students uh, in our building construction program have built buildings they've built they've helped build houses and so that uh, that's critical for them to to be able to have that experience um, one of the most valuable opportunities uh, that our students have is through our internships and our co-op assignments right. those students can go for uh, as little as two weeks for an internship or four weeks, but then they can go for longer assignments in a, a co-op assignment. They can go for their last term uh, for four months uh, mm-hmm. and and complete their their program requirements uh, outside of the classroom, but get hands-on experience. And um, in addition to that, we have opportunities on campus as well. We, we have work-study opportunities for students. Um, many of those tend to be from our uh, administrative office or computer operating systems, which are more, more clerical maybe in nature, but those students uh, get hands-on experience here. So all of that, um, those experiences work to contribute to that head cap. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, and, and we've been working really hard with our community colleges on what we call high-impact practices. That is what it is. It's the experiences. You all do it well. It's built in the curriculum <coughs> for, for other instructors, uh, maybe in other settings. They have to be a little bit more intentional about that right. than, than you all are. Well, I, I appreciate your thoughts on that. And um, again, I'm just trying to make sure that we're raising to our, our listeners um, that a lot of the recommendations from the authors in the book is something that we are doing, uh, you know, and so they might, you know, as we think about the larger national conversations about the value of higher education, um, these are some things, lessons that could be taken from our, our current institutions. So, um Two recommendations that the authors make at the end of the book. Um, the, one is really specific to those four-year institutions that don't have a vocational focus. But the second uh, is that most colleges have lost sight of their principal reason for why they exist in the first place. And they offer a solution for institutions to just do a better job of onboarding students. You talked about kind of your program that you've got here to do that, um, but also to help students understand they belong to a community of learners. And so as a president, you know, what are you doing to ensure your stakeholders understand the why of higher education and, and more specifically your institution's role in building that sense of community? Mm-hmm. The, uh, we know the what and we know the how, and, and so we want to focus on the why. And the why is, again, two, the two parts of our mission, student success and workforce development. But we, what we tell our students, the first of every term, um, we bring students in three times, a, well, six times a year. We bring them at the beginning of the term and mid midterm. And if we have a low enrollment, we bring them in whenever we have spots open. Right, so right. Um, I always tell our instructors, and then as part of their orientation to their program, they give students a campus tour. And so I said, bring them by. Mm-hmm. I want to meet. I want to meet our new students. Mm-hmm. Very first thing for our cohort classes, uh, like nursing, practical nursing, and um, farm tech or practical um, uh, patient care tech. Mm-hmm. I go and I meet with each of those groups the very first day of class, and and I, I want them to know my name. I want them to know, to know my face. I want them to understand that we want this to be a good experience for them. Um, we have worked extremely hard to build community. Um, I don't want it to be, we don't want it to be just you show up six hours a day and you know, in 12 months or less, you're out of here and, mm-hmm. and you, that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, we have uh, many ways. Uh, I've mentioned Ollie the Otter. We do costume contests. We do chili cook-offs. We do coffee and conversations where we, we're about to have one uh, in a couple of weeks, coffee and hot chocolate. It's free to the students, um, and it's the admin team just 
mingling outside in the hall in the in the front lobby with students and 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 just making them feel comfortable, making mm-hmm. them feel safe, um, making them feel like they are wanted here mm-hmm. and, and that we're here to support them. Um, popcorn with the president. Uh, it's it's always fun. Uh, last year was the first time we celebrated National Donut Day. Okay. And so everybody got a free donut. I love that day. It's, <laughs> it, it's fun. And, uh-huh. and, you know, it's just, it's little things like that that you take the time that to to do it. And, Mm -hmm. and I was amazed at how many students that, um, said, thank you. We appreciate you doing this. Mm Um, you know, participating and winning the Christmas parade, uh, contest for the last three out of the four years, three out of the last four years, Mm -hmm. students are involved in that. Students help build our float. Um, we took a back seat for many years being involved in our community. And so, um, that's fun and exciting. Um, we, uh, being just a strong community partner, we, I was excited last Thursday. Uh, we attended the Chamber of Commerce annual awards uh, banquet, and we were nominated uh, in our category, which oddly enough is industry of the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess we're in education and is, is an industry. Yeah. But there were three nominees, um, us, UT Southern, mm-hmm. and Pulaski Energize, a local um, electric company. TCAP Plasky won. Well, congratulations. We were voted yeah. on by the 360 members. And so um, that um, that's being a part of the community. Yeah. And, and that's being visible in the community. Um, our, being our National uh, Skills USA Model of Excellence. Uh, we, we work hard to build community among our students, our staff, and our faculty. And, and we want them to know that they all matter, that we care about them. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think I think they realize that. Yeah, um, it, it's little things. It's you know, it's um, supplying forks and and knives and spoons in the student break room. It's you know, listening to their needs, their wants. It's um, you know, when there were only two microwaves and they were popping breakers and they had to wait forever to heat up their lunch and they only get thirty minutes for lunch. Mm-hmm. Um, adding. Four more microwaves mm-hmm. and and little things like that. Just letting them know that uh, it, it, we want it to be a good experience for yeah. them. So well, and clearly you're listening to students and their needs here. But I think <clears throat> one of the challenges that we hear too. I mean, you're in a rural area, so sometimes you don't have maybe the local uh, resources that a metropolitan area might have when we're thinking about supporting students' needs just generally. And so the authors talk a little bit too about what it is that's on students' minds. Mm-hmm. What is it that's really pressing for them? Um, for your role as a president, what are you hearing about that your students need support on maybe or that are top of mind for them? Many of our students, um, as I've mentioned, you know, they are, they're working, Mm -hmm. uh, they have families. Um, uh, the challenge for them is the balance. And, um, so working with them in, finding a schedule that works best for them. It may be a modified schedule. It may be a part-time schedule. Um, in t- the fall of 2022, um, we brought on a full-time student success coach and um, that person has been invaluable. Um, it's another person who, it's another set of ears mm-hmm. for students to build relationships with. Uh, and that, that student success coach sees every student every term first term they're focused on getting grounded getting some initial uh, requirements met uh, with training and but as they progress in second and third term it's working on life skills resume and portfolio building skills um, uh, interview um, skills and, and prep and so those a lot of the concerns our students have are not only just time but financial. Mm -hmm. Um, There are many barriers um, that some of our students face. And and prior to to that, uh, that exposure to that student success coach, many have shared now that she's come on board, many have shared their concerns with her. And so she's a sounding board and she's someone who can then communicate resources. A lot of our students uh, were not aware 
that there there's funding mm-hmm. available to pay for childcare, to mm-hmm. pay for to help with um, gas expenses mm-hmm. uh, to get here, and so um, it's. Those are those are typically the primary concerns. Mm-hmm. You know, we uh, balancing life, um, balancing job, balancing school. Uh, that is, um, you know, we've had recent conversations about mental health, and mm-hmm. and and some of those students are struggling with that, and so mm-hmm. we're trying to connect them with. You know, when that appears uh, as a as a barrier, we're trying to eliminate the physical barriers, the the financial hardship, the the scheduling, um, because we we tell them we want them we want them to finish. We want them we want to give them a key that's going to open doors for them and opportunities. Right. And so, um, you know, as far as you know, when I think about um, common. Um, Things in common with four-year universities, which was the focus of this book, as far as concerns, I think yeah. probably uh, the most common thing I think uh, our students maybe not as much, but I, I do still see it is, is safety. Mm-hmm. Uh, students want to feel safe. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the climate uh, with violence in our nation and around the world. Um, I don't think they feel it as much as maybe a large university, but mm-hmm. uh, it, it's still a, a concern, and so mm-hmm. they. One of the great uh, things that happened this past year is um, funding was provided to bring on an on-campus police officer. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that has uh, given everyone a peace of mind. Sure. Knowing that there's support and a resource here. Yeah. Um, And and we've been highly focused on on making it a safe campus, a well-lit campus. Um, So... That's that's I don't I think it's a lower concern. Uh, most of it is, is financial and, and balancing family and, and life yeah. for our students. Well, and that's what the authors say. Even the university, since we're talking about, is just again kind of the pressures of college, trying to be successful, earning that grade, building mm-hmm. a resume, which you all are addressing uh, through your model with the student success coach, but. You know, the fact that you have a staff member that can help direct them to those resources is one way to kind of combat these other challenges that are going on outside the classroom. So that's a great model, I think, you know, that we'd encourage. But there's certainly more work to be done there. We're always inviting partners to think about how they can help us support students with those resources. You know, one of the things that we also added uh, a resource for students um, and employers, uh, our partners in the community, is we uh, became a member of College Central Network this past year. Um, our, um, forgive me, our um, C... Oh, the CRM. CRM that's yeah, coming. customer is, relations. Is going to probably help us. Absolutely. It will help us as well. And this is base. This is similar to that, but we wanted, to, this is something we could invest in and it was a, a good investment. And it, it's a, it's basically our own LinkedIn and uh, Indeed mm-hmm. at the same time. And it's local to TCAT Pulaski. Um, our students are all free. It's free to our students. We pay for it as a college and our students sign up for it. It, it has tremendous, um, job preparation skills, uh, resources, resume uh, building skills built into it. But our students can can become a part of that and, and employers become a part of it as well. They advertise positions they have. Our students get a first look at those. Yeah. Um, employers can, if, if the student gives permission, em, um, employers can browse our students' resumes and, and look to... Uh, and, and basically recruit. And mm-hmm. so it, that is something that we're excited about. And, and as part of that, that's a springboard to we're kicking uh, off uh, one of our goals as part of our strategic enrollment management initi- initiative was to create an alumni association, mm-hmm. an active alumni association. Don't know that many TCATs have that. And so we're 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 building that. We're in the infancy stage, but we're building that. And we, we want to support our students and graduates after they've left us. Um, many of our, we see it already uh, informally. Um, many of our, I hear all the time, uh, our students are uh, coming back to visit instructors. They're calling instructors. Uh, they, you know, they, if they're looking for a job change or they're looking for an opportunity, they'll call our instructor, their instructor, their right. previous instructor and say, have you heard of anything? So our instructors are not just working with current students. They they continue to support our graduates and alumni 
long after they le- they yeah. have left here. Yeah. So I'm thinking you're actually referring to our comprehensive learner record as you talk, because the learner record that we're building right now will mm-hmm. be the first system in the country that'll have this is going to have those skills and and help them write their mm-hmm. resume. I think that's uh, probably th- actually, yes. but the CRM certainly is another technology we're leveraging to allow us to kind of track students and what their resources right. are that they need. So both actually kind of address this issue when we're thinking about students. So good, I'm glad. And we're excited to, to have that investment from the state to, to do that work. Um, you know, we're kind of coming close to the end of our conversation today and, and thinking through kind of these final thoughts that you might have. Um, I always like to ask my, my interviewee, um, Okay, we just spent some time talking about all these different concepts, but when we think about about the the national conversation, you as a president, if you had some advice, final reflective thoughts that you wanted to share about how we combat these criticisms about the value of higher education, what would you what would you say? Well, without a doubt, there is value. There is tremendous value in higher education. Um, I'm a little biased. I'm mm-hmm. going to say specifically in technical education and specifically in Tennessee. Um, but in, in broad terms, it, it, there is value um, nationwide. Um, the thing that saddens me is those statistics of students that don't pursue. And um, I, th- I think we're, we're trying to do a good job of identifying why mm-hmm. they don't pursue. Um, in Tennessee, it, it, we have a trem- students have a tremendous opportunity in front of them. Tennessee Promise, Tennessee Reconnect, um, the federal financial aid that's available. Um, I think we as a we as a system, not the, not just the Tennessee Board of Regents, but we as a system, we as we as uh, educators, we as um, parents, we as secondary um, school. Um, instructors, secondary school counselors, uh, we even as elementary and middle school um, personnel, we need to do a better job of working with students to identify um, opportunities, identify um, identify and, and share opportunities and, and possible career paths and and how do you get there? And I just think there's, I still hear today um, uh, and in 2024, uh, so many people just aren't aware mm-hmm. uh, of, of, we've had people come through here with on tours and, and, and professionals in the education system. And it's like, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know this was what you guys did. I didn't mm-hmm. know that you, I didn't know it only took 12 months. I didn't know it was free tuition if they don't get federal aid. And and so I didn't know that they could get Tennessee Reconnect um, as, as an adult learner. Uh, so I, I think we still have work to do there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's just... Uh, there, there's opportunity, and um, we. One of the things we are trying to do. Our goal is to to get that word out, and and to be everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we want to uh, educate prospective students. We want to educate parents. Uh, we want to educate the secondary and elementary school teachers. We we've brought middle school and elementary tour groups through here. Now, you know, our, sometimes our, our staff or our instructors think, oh, that's a little young, isn't it? And, mm-hmm. um, and if they're properly staffed and, you know, it's okay, it works. But mm-hmm. it's just exposure. Mm-hmm. You know, what what's available? And, and you just never know what may be a trigger that somewhere down the road go, you know, I remember seeing that cool robot in, in the welding program at TCAT Pulaski. Uh, so we're, we're just trying to, you know, we're, we're trying to be everywhere. Uh, we do our own open houses, but we're at community events. We're at Christmas parades. We're at civic clubs. We're at boys and girls clubs. We're at elementary schools. Um, it's just, we want to, to, to be known and we want to, uh, folks to know what we have here and yeah. what we can do for them. And it's, ongoing work because you, you just have, always have a new audience that you're trying to get the information out to. Mm-hmm. So it's just, mm-hmm. you got to keep at it over and over doing the same kind of outreach yeah. in that respect. But your campus again is doing amazing work. A lot of things uh, that I was really excited that you shared today with our listeners. Mm-hmm. Um, you all are doing just 
again, some yeoman's work there. So. Well, and, you know, the other, just to, to add to that, the other exciting thing, especially in Tennessee, is um, with technical education, is the tremendous amount of support uh, mm-hmm. that our um, state has provided in the way of financial um, campuses. Um, TCATs are 50, 60 years old, and uh, we're getting facelifts, we're getting new campuses, we're getting renovations and additions. Uh, we're about to undergo a $30 million expansion, and that's exciting. That's, mm-hmm. that's energy. That is creating some energy and excitement. And so, you know, we need to capitalize on that, uh, and that's statewide. So, we just, you know, there's it's like your home. You rearrange a room and it's exciting for a while, mm-hmm. you know? And fresh. so it's fresh. Yeah. It's something new, uh, a fresh coat of paint. And so here, here's our opportunity to, to take advantage of this, this change and this, this in, infusion of, of capital into our system. So. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mike, for sitting and talking with me and sharing some of these thoughts with our listeners and sharing the good work. I appreciate the time. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for listening to this edition of From the VC's Bookshelf, brought to you by TBR, the College System of Tennessee, powering the state's economy and changing the lives of thousands of graduates starting successful careers each year. To learn more about upcoming book selections or to register to attend discussions live, visit tbr.edu bookshelf.